What's going on, everybody? So I just summoned 300 summons for Carabine here because I wanted to bring him up to Immortal for this video, for my first impressions, and give you all kind of an idea of what's going on with Carabine. I got incredibly unlucky. 300 pulls, we got three copies of him. And the only additional copy I got was from the Mirror of Reformation. So pretty terrible rates. Some of the worst summons I have ever done honestly i mean getting three and 300 would have been bad but remember one of those is pity so technically it's two in like 299 which is just absolutely atrocious but that's okay because we're gonna go ahead and test him out i'm gonna bring him up to immortal he's got some pretty interesting things going on with his kit he does have that kind of tank kit design which you've come to expect knock down max hp damage what makes him more interesting than some of the other tanks in my opinion is it was his ability to gain a lot of crit reduction this is really exciting for me in pvp because of all the crit damage dumping onto you mainly from energy characters assassin characters hunter characters just absolutely decimating you Hopefully, this gives them a little bit of an advantage to take them head on and reduce their damage enough to where you don't actually just get one shot. He also has some really nice basic attack amplifiers to kind of give him just a lot of extra damage on his basics. So I'm hoping for a lot of damage out of him and the ability to kind of withstand a lot of damage, especially in PvP. So we're going to go ahead and build him out, get him up to Immortal, build him with gear and get his exclusive up to 20 and i'll be right back all right so we have the immortal carabine pretty much maxed out we got the talents all nice and leveled up we have exclusive 20 which is going to be pretty important his exclusive 30 looks to be a more pvp focused exclusive and well because tanks and carbine specific looks to be more of a pvp character anyways this is probably a really good exclusive 30 if you are looking to use them in PvP, giving that extra HP boost and the teleport to kind of assassinate almost someone in battle is going to be pretty cool. As for gear and what we want to focus on here, my goal was to get accuracy, HP, as well as fitting in some defense, damage reduction, crit reduction, those types of things, mainly because his extra accuracy is going to increase this chance to knock down as well as give you the ability to dispel invincibility with his basic it's also really important to note that his basics do not get affected by attack speed so even though he's getting a bunch of extra damage off his basics they do not get you more attacks if you're running attack speed so there's no reason to build that the extra accuracy also potentially gives you aoe damage on his basic so running a lot of accuracy up to like 200 or so is a pretty good base level amount but if you're going to run them in pvp my advice is to not go any under 150 total accuracy after that we just got a bunch of hp on him as i said to kind of scale up his damage numbers and his shielding here are the final stats that i have on him okay why uh, come on there we go <laughs> um, we got 3.5 million hp a little bit low on the hp side of things as for you know accuracy we are above 200 which is gonna be pretty nice as damage reduction and all that other stats are as shown not an amazing build not like the best ever but workable usable and that's kind of where i usually test out a lot of these characters so we're gonna dive into pvp as well as just some random stages to try out his damage so i'll be right back so the first thing i wanted to do is kind of test out some of the damage numbers of course this isn't going to be perfect we have hyper evolutions on pandemonium to rash wamagon pandemonium's exclusive 30 etc 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 but this is going to give us a little bit of an idea on kind of where everyone is at um as for sets opportunistic is the one that's going to be working the best um unfortunately for me i have not formed a lot of lava bits. so um we are uh we are low on opportunistic sets now i'm gonna put him in the same row um as uh oh my goodness i'm blanking on her name ray is it um just because i do not want him thrown in the back row i don't know if he'll be able to survive i'm gonna put ray in the back line she's gonna be our support we're gonna see how this goes this isn't the dream comp or anything like that i just wanted to kind of compare the damage numbers and we do have a little bit of support in ray's kind of healing capabilities which is gonna be quite nice so 
we'll try tossing omegon in the back row as i would normally do and then you know we might try running a carabine here and tossing him in the back row as well so you can see there's his ultimate and well you know participating a little bit doing a decent chunk of dps here Wamagon looks to be doing a little bit more since he's just in the back row. I'm sure if we threw Carabine in the back row, we could see a little bit of additional damage from him. Unfortunately, his damage is not like really amazing, which is what I was kind of hoping for. Of course, everyone knows how good Pandemonium's DPS is because of her exclusive authority and just how much she's offering the tank comp. And in terms of obex damage like from knockdowns and stuff it's kind of hard to know where that's coming from because all of them have the knockdowns obviously if you're getting big aoe's like wamagon is in the back row right now you're going to get more dps out of it we look to be able to win this soul mine here it's not like a particularly hard hard stage or anything like that but this gives us a little bit of a showing to kind of where uh carabine is in comparison to everyone else again i think he's really going to shine in pvp and he does a good chunk of damage here i think if we toss him in the back row he could maybe compete with someone like a wamagon so because of that i'm actually going to go ahead and just try that exact thing we'll see if he's able to survive let's put him in the front row and uh let teresh throw him in the back line and see what he's able to do here um oh he's dead <laughs> um okay uh, let's uh let's let's swap these guys in the second row uh that is funny actually a uh, carbine just wow okay um well he just got immediately nuked as well as wamagon did uh so that's actually very interesting to see let me try and uh i guess put him in the full back row and maybe we can avoid getting absolutely one shot there we go so he didn't get one shot this time and uh, he was able to get a shield up which is pretty interesting so just kind of changing the placement of these characters um and we're gonna see if carbine's able to dish out a good chunk of dps he is hitting the sorietta in the back row so he's kind of acting like an assassin at least with teresh's help and now that we have some time to scale up maybe we're gonna see some big dps from carbine and it looks like uh based on what i'm seeing here you know you're gonna get a decent chunk of dps out of him um as long as he's able to apply those aoe's it's gonna be pretty good so that's pretty hopeful um but once again nothing like insanely impressive out of him this is kind of uh a little bit less than what i was hoping for he's not bad by any means as you can see he's keeping up with a lot of the dps numbers he is offering himself that shield a little bit of crit damage reduction all that good stuff coming out but when you're fighting in pve like this you're really just kind of comparing the dps numbers um because Crit damage reduction and survivability oftentimes aren't the bottlenecks in things like endless battle or battlefield of azura you don't necessarily die before you don't have enough dps to get through the time limit at least from what i've seen so far so the place i really want to try them out is pvp so let's go ahead and buy just a bunch of tickets here um and then let's run into various different pvp modes or teams here here is an assassin lineup we have asuka um in the lineup as well as kusanagi so a pretty strong assassin lineup here and i still think these guys are just totally misplaced i mean look look at this and then look at everyone else <laughs> i even think the, the the ghost in the shell characters kind of fit in better but regardless i'm not gonna run my assassin lineup against them so let's go ahead and run in with the tank lineup yet again and i'll run the full tank lineup just to start us off and then perhaps we go with um a little bit something different like we run some sort of support but what is kind of nice about running a full tank lineup is that you're going to be able to get quite a bit of just tanky characters that aren't going to get one shot necessarily <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and put these guys i'm going to put um what's his face carabine in the back row because they're going to jump on him and hopefully his crit damage reduction is going to be able to kind of keep him alive kind of just absorb a ton of that dps you can see down here he is taking crit damage right now but he basically isn't taking any damage because remember for the first 20 seconds of the fight he has slowly scaling down crit damage reduction but you can see it's actually really really solid now the only question here is that their assassin line is very good they did just immune carabine's hit the hope is that we're going to be able to survive just long enough to where their phantom cloak goes down their immunity goes down and then we're going to be able to nuke them down with basically like one or two well-placed aoe's 
and it looks like we're not going to be able to do that here we weren't able to survive long enough uh you can see wamagon just got immediately nuked at the beginning of the battle ray is still alive but unfortunately we didn't really get that um accomplished there so interesting to kind of see i will go ahead and mix the team up i'll put carabine in the front row this time and kind of see where that puts us simply because maybe he's going to soak up a lot of that damage so someone like a wamagon does not get absolutely wrecked um, we do have ray getting thrown back that's probably not ideal i probably should have changed that up but you know she'll maybe take out a fiona for us there goes wamagon carabine is able to survive for a good chunk of time here you could see with between his shielding um as well as being able to really just soak up a lot of damage with this crit damage reduction he actually is able to survive and you can see the damage we're able to pump out with pandemonium's kind of exclusive 30 there the aoe nukage coming down it's the fiona that's really causing a problem here and i would like to try this again but not throw ray in the back line um this time so let me just uh find that team again come on all right let me just adjust this real quick and we're gonna put wamagon try to toss him in the back line maybe we push fiona towards our team which could be very very good so uh i generally like doing that in most comps and ray works a little bit better when she's in the group trying to aoe some people down and maybe mess some people up it also could be good to throw teresh in the back line but having teresh in the kind of middle row or in the middle of things you know getting that melee field damage reduction down and just having a lot of aoe coming out is actually quite useful but honestly not too big of a difference here it looks like ray is going to go down here um teresh is shortly going to follow and we've tried this three different times with a little bit of variation here uh and the assassins kind of got nuked but you could see carbine actually doing some very good dps there which is kind of what i was expecting especially being able to survive for quite a big chunk of time here's another assassin lineup you know what we'll try the exact same assassin uh, or our tank lineup against this assassin lineup this one is a little bit weaker we don't have like asuka in here um or anything like that <clears throat> which uh, is going to make it a lot easier to deal with i imagine i don't know if it's going to be absolutely a slam dunk or anything like that um and you can see a pandemonium's actually already dead uh, wamagon is kind of annoying those back rows samael is going to go through his first life here which is going to be quite useful looks like wamagon's going to be able to oh nope just got nuked down by rickert um ability there carbine is soaking up a lot of dps there and well looks like going to be another loss uh to the assassin lineup here again not necessarily the absolute best lineup and one thing i do want to try is perhaps running more dps um so we'll try against that weaker assassin lineup here and instead of running uh like a ray maybe i guess maybe we just run like a support here we can run pure and potentially i think i'd rather just run a res here so we'll put res down and then we'll put uh northion here <clears throat> and try to get him in the thick of things and try to one shot res did just get nuked that was one thing i was worried about i was like maybe i should not have put res uh in the battle there goes northion he was a second late on that ultimate wow that was really close i think we could reese try that and uh and take out um the res here because he did just get one shot let me just try to find that comp again one of the advantages of being kind of in the top ranks you kind of find the same teams over and over again so let's try another tank here we'll try that wamagon yet again and uh yeah we'll toss carbine in the back row that's fine now the goal here is to try to at least get north if north is able to get one ultimate off i think we're going to be in a decent shape you can see he's kind of getting wrecked um, and that ends up happening maybe if we put him in like the middle row or maybe we have him jump um the fiona in the back row we could see some different results but you could see with carbine being in the back row we're actually able to do some really major dps to fiona he is the only one that's gotten this close to kind of nuking fiona down which is actually really interesting to see so once again i do think he's going to be quite solid for arena it's just that these assassin lineups maybe i should just try someone different um i feel like we could win this um i'm running out of attempts though so let me just try this one last time and instead of tossing any of these guys back there i'm gonna toss a northion back there maybe he can <coughs> kind of deal with the uh, fiona hopefully at least or at least stall long enough to where he's able to get his ultimate off and that's exactly what ended up happening here um so hopefully 
oh man his immunity their immunity went off as soon as northion slammed into the ground which prevented any of the life steal so still a little bit unfortunate there i think this one got a little bit closer but uh still not quite enough oh okay we we took out a couple of assassins there and that did look to be uh, a little bit better we did take out samuel's first life there uh, which is quite nice there goes fiona dominic's still alive we're gonna have carbines ultimate coming out that's massive dps to the samuel and look at that there goes dominic um and then samuel's final life here wow so once again pandemonium surviving is pretty key because we had a lot of aoe dps but carbine being able to survive between the crit damage reduction and that was the win so we finally were able to win it uh did you know various different modifications but i do think just a little bit of extra dps in that comp did matter quite a bit here's a vanguard lineup i don't think this one's going to be particularly hard i could leave northion in here i could not have northion in here i don't really think we're going to have any issues here um this one has like their own northion it's got ravenna in it. it's a pretty weak comp honestly this is like no problem whatsoever carbine's dps though is quite solid in every one of these battles uh, because he's not dying because of the massive crit damage reduction so that's really really important but also because of just having that aoe max hp basic attack essentially and just having a lot of max hp damage he actually really performs quite solidly so really cool to see that we'll try one more comp here and we'll try against the shark bait um i think this is an energy lineup so another energy lineup here let's try it let's see how this goes um we're gonna toss the uh the northion in the back row it looks like maybe <laughs> didn't really work too well um carbine is alive of course you know he's not getting 100 nuke down um and maybe if we we threw wamagon in the back row we would have had a better shot um or maybe even carbine in the back row but that's just a super high dps comp and they were a little bit stronger than us but kind of interesting again not saying i'm like the master of pvp or anything or i built the perfect cops or anything that's not at all what i was saying i just want to get an idea kind of where he stood in terms of dps numbers and kind of what he's offering to the team and in terms of first impressions here what i'm gonna say about carbine at an immortal level right he's not hyper of like pandemonium um, and he doesn't even have the extra immortal value i still think pandemonium is the must-have tank her exclusive 30 is next level good okay this thing just absolutely wrecks comps when you're looking for dps for tanks carbine on the other hand he does offer a good amount of dps with this ultimate and the aoe basics so if you're able to get the accuracy high enough to where you have almost always that aoe dps on the basic you're actually going to see him be very valuable because of his crit damage reduction keep in mind though this crit damage reduction really really does not do anything for you in pve this is really unfortunate because in pve all you're getting out of him is just a little bit of extra dps and an extra knockdown i still think he's going to be one of the better tanks i don't know if i would prefer him over ray in pve scenarios in pvp scenarios though i view him as potentially like that third tank i still like to rush a little bit more because of the versatility of being able to throw people around however if you get that exclusive 30 on a carbine he kind of does that on his own right you're gonna be able to tp to that lowest um max hp character keep in mind it is max hp character not current hp so it's not going to be the one that's about to die it's going to be probably like the squishiest assassin or the squishiest character on the battlefield overall so i think he's going to be really really solid with that and mainly your pvp tank so we'll see i'll be testing out more battlefield of azura comps and i'll probably do a full video on all the comps in the game just because it's been a while since i've updated it and well it's a new year so hopefully you all are having a wonderful 2024 so far let me know what you think about carbine in the comment section down below i do think he's a really really good pvp tank but maybe not like insano for pve thanks for watching and i'll see you off in the next one